Good morning. Welcome to Revelation Reveal. Have you ever thought about the new Jerusalem and coming down from the sky? Well, in Revelation 21, it talks about that. And that's where we're going to be at today. Revelation chapter number 21. Uh, this is part three in our Revelation chapter one chapter study. So we're on week number 58 of studying the book of Revelation. So we're going to begin reading in verse number nine. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. So the portrayal of New Jerusalem, the Lamb's wife. There's not too much question about what the, this angel who ushers John, uh, as it says in verse number 10, he carries him away in the spirit of great and high mountain, takes him up top to it, is referring about, he's going to show John the bride, the lamb's wife. So verse 10, he carries him up in the spirit in a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So some believe this city will sit upon the earth because it has foundations, Hebrews 11, 10. Many others believe this city will hover in, the, in outer space above earth. At any rate, everybody has access to this city. It tells us that in verse 24. So in my estimation, it's going to come down. It's going to be visible from earth. It's going to be able to be seen from earth, and there's going to be access to it. Continues on, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. The city does not generate its own light. In verses 23 and 24, it talks even more about that. In those verses, it says this, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And so it, there's no need for its own light, but rather the light comes from the Son of God. So also the believer does not produce our own light. We just reflect the light of the sun. We're kind of like the moon. The moon has no light of its own. It just reflects the light of the sun. So the city, as it comes down, there's a light to it. And it, it's like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. So imagine a light shining through a diamond and reflecting and refracting all the colors of the rainbow. That's the brightness of this city. Continues on in verse 12, and had a great a wall, great and high, and had 12 gates, and at the gate 12 angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And on the east three gates, and on the north three gates, and on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So here's this city that's coming down. It continues on and he talked with me, the angel did, to John, and had a golden reed to measure the city. Now, the reed was a measurement. It was uh, different lengths at different times, but it was considered a standard of measurement to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. Verse 16, the city lieth four square. The length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and breadth and the height of it are equal. So the shape of the city, the measurements are equal about 1,500 miles wide by 1,500 miles long by 1,500 miles high. Now, some think this city will be a sphere which rests in space like another planet. Some believe it to be a perfect cube. Most believe it to be like a pyramid-like in structure with Christ as the chief cornerstone appearing at the top where the throne is located and from which the river of pure water will issue found in chapter 22, verse number one, which says this, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. So there's the shape of this city whether it's the circle, whether it's the square, whether it's the pyramid-like structure, it's a massive, massive structure. The walls of the city, verse 17, he measured the wall thereof, 140 and four cubits, 
according to the measure of man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. So the walls were 216 feet thick. A cubit was considered uh, from the end top of the middle finger to the bend of the elbow, in most cases, are approximately 18 inches. So we find 216 feet thick, 216 feet high, and appeared to John to be made of jasper. The city is brilliantly transparent, and the light of Christ radiates to all those around it. And so can you imagine the brightness of the glory of New Jerusalem that's come down from heaven? The walls of the city, as we've talked about, are so bright, and it radiates around the whole earth. The foundation of the city in verses 14, 19, and 20, here is a multicolored foundation of 12 precious stones. Let's look at verse 19. The foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardix, the sixth sardis, the seventh crystallite, the eighth barrel, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysoporos, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst, the twelve gates were twelve pearls, and every several gate was one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold as transparent glass. So the foundations of the city, are there's twelve foundations. The first is jasper. Jasper is a clear and diamond-like. Sapphires are blue in color. The chalcedony is an agate thought to be like sky blue with colors. Emerald is a bright green. Sardis is red with white stone. Sardis is a stone that's red in color. Beryl is a sea green in color. Topaz is yellow slash green and is transparent. The uh, chrysophorus is another shade of green. Jacinth is a, has a variation of many colors. Amethyst is purple. So can you imagine all these precious stones, the brightness, the colors of the rainbow that are shining forth from the city? It's foundation. It's a beautiful, beautiful place and of great value. John tells us that Christ said, I go to prepare a place for you. It has names of them. If this city is the church gathered together, the bride of Christ, then it is fitting that the foundation be made up with the names of the apostles and prophets, which it tells us that the foundation had the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The gates of the city in verse 21, they're, they're made of pearl. Some say it's impossible for the gates to be of pearl because there's not an oyster that's that big enough that can make a gate. But they forget those something that's really important. Christ spoke the world into existence so Christ could speak into existence a pearl. He could do that if he wanted to. Now, pearls come from the sea. They're not mined from the rocks of the earth. A pearl begins as a grain of sand which cuts it into the side of a living organism. To protect itself, that organism covers itself with layer upon layer of fluid until a beautiful pearl is formed. The pearl of the gates of the city could possibly be to remind us that we're just dirt that hurt the sight of Jesus and was covered by his righteousness. That's what one author wrote. Pearls are expensive, and Christ gave his life for us for the price of the pearl. The street of the city is pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. The world hasn't discovered gold that pure. We've got 18 karat gold and 12 karat gold, 24 karat gold, but we don't have gold that's pure like in glass. The world hasn't discovered that yet. It's astonishing that there is a transparent metal that's yet to be found called gold. We, don't, we do know that a metal, lead, can produce what is known as lead crystal, which is transparent. Imagine gold crystal streets. It seems that the streets are transparent so the glorious light of Christ can be seen throughout the city of God. What a sight John saw that day. And one day, my friend, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you'll see this. And you'll get to go into this. Now, today's video, we just discussed the exterior of the city. 
Next week, we'll dive into the interior a little bit and talk about some of the things the Bible says is in there. But I want you to picture in your mind the beautiful brightness of the majesty of God, that there's no need for the sun. Imagine the precious stones and the jewels and the gates of pearl and the street of gold and how beautiful that place is. And then think about you. I think about myself and how unworthy I am to be called a child of God and how blessed we are that we have been saved by the blood of the Lamb, that Christ died for us. So today, as you think about heaven, you think about the new Jerusalem, put yourself in your proper place. I'm reminded of Isaiah chapter six, when he said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. When God's in his proper place, it puts us in his proper place. Isaiah said, he felt, woe is me for I am undone. For I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king. When God's put in his proper place, we will be humbled by that fact. I look forward to the day. You say, well, preacher, why didn't you go into more detail? I can just give you what the Bible says. I think there's some beauties and glories there that are beyond compare, and words cannot describe all the excitement there. Can you imagine 1,500 miles wide? By 1,500 miles wide, by 1,500 miles high, that's a big place that God's prepared for you. And if that stuff, those precious stones, the street of gold, if that's on the outside, just imagine what's on the inside. So for today, remember this, the best is yet to come. One day soon, we'll be in heaven with God. Until that day, be faithful to God. Keep serving him with your life. Invite someone to come to church this week. May God bless you and have a wonderful day. Thanks for taking the time to stop by and we'll see you next time right here on Revelation Revealed. Mm -hmm.